Good evening, friends. Uh, today, we are going to deal with a very important topic. And this topic is important both in constitutional law and also in administrative law. Further, this topic is important in the LLM paper of judicial process, I mean for the postgraduate students. And the topic is locus standi in repetitions or public interest litigations. Once more, locus standi in repetitions or writs and public interest litigation. Now, before we start with the concept, we have to understand a basic principle. The principle is, in India, when your fundamental rights, that is the rights which are guaranteed in the part three of the constitution. So when your fundamental rights, that is the fundamental right of a citizen is violated, the citizen can directly approach the Supreme Court under Article 32 of the constitution and to the High Court under Article 226 of the constitution. So, the citizen can invoke the Supreme Court's jurisdiction directly under Article 32 and to the High Court under Article 226 of the Constitution. This happens when, as I told you earlier, when the fundamental right of a citizen is being violated by the state, either by a law or by an administrative act. So, this is very important right because the citizen of a country is fighting the might of the state directly fighting the power of the state so here when uh, the citizen is filing a case to the supreme court or the high court claiming that there is a violation of his fundamental right the courts will issue Writs in the nature of habeas corpus, co warranto, uh, sexuality, prohibition, and mandamus. These are the most popular five writs. Now, popularly, it is called as uh, repetitions and things like that. The other, Uru. Pauranda Mauliga Abagash singer Rajin Niamam Vario Matta Yadangin Administrative Act Vario Lenki Kuyana Gil Indeed A Pauranda Parnagana Nede Idunuti Irivatara Manuche the Pragara High Court of the Leko Mupatranda Manuche the Pragara Supreme Court of the Leko Direct tie the case will come. I'm going to put the case in the other of the Puduai repetitions in the Parinada Mukhemaya repetitions in the Parinada Supreme Court remedy at Bugi in the repetitions Mukhemaya repetitions are habeas corpus, sexuary, co warrant, prohibition, mantis, Ibekia. Now, with regard to writs, one preliminary question is, who has the locus standi? Now, locus standi in a case means, who can file a case? This is applicable both to writs and also to other civil suits. Who can file a case? So, basic doctrine with regard to locus standi is UB just UB remedium means if there is a right, there is a remedy. It means a person whose right is violated, only that person can file a case. This is usually called a person aggrieved. Sathar like the locus standi the Varena, the Ark case of Kudaka Adilla Distana Tatun Varena, 
ആരുടെ അവകാശമാണ് ലംഘിക്കപ്പെട്ടിരിക്കുന്നത് ആ വ്യക്തിക്കാണ് കേസ് കൊടുക്കാവുന്നത് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദ പേഴ്സൺ ആക്ട് റൈറ്റ് ഓ ദ പേഴ്സൺ ഹൂസ് റൈറ്റ് ഇസ് വയലേറ്റ് ഹി ക്യാൻ ഓൺലി ഫയൽ എ കേസ് no with regard to rich also in a novel sense that rules are applicable that is when your fundamental right is violated then you can file a case not any of your relatives or friends for example i am dismissed from government service without an inquiry so there is what there is a violation of my equality right which is a fundamental right so here if it i am arbitrarily dismissed from my government employment i have to file a case my neighbor my friend my relatives they cannot file a case so the general rule is that the person aggrieved സാധാരണ ഗതിയിൽ ആരുടെ മൗലിക അവകാശങ്ങളാണോ ലംഘിക്കപ്പെട്ടിരിക്കുന്നത് അവരാണ് കേസ് കൊടുക്കട്ടെ and they were considered as the prerogative rights so right from england this there was an exception with regard to two rights that is the right of the habeas corpus and the right of co warrant now habeas corpus is a right which is used to verify whether a person who is under detention is illegally detained or unlawfully detained in case of habeas corpus any person who is a near relative or a friend an ex friend could file a case this was an exception to the general principle of locus standing similarly uh, this principle you can see for example in cases like uh, sunil patra versus uh, delhi administration we can see this similarly in quo warranto writ also the locus standi is somewhat different in quo warranto writ which is a writ used to verify whether a person who is holding a substantial public office has the necessary qualification for that particular job this is why the, or this is for the purpose for using the quo warranto writ in quo warranto writ also any person who is not an applicant to the pope post could challenge the office of a person that is if i am challenging the job of a person who is acting as a vice chancellor because he doesn't have necessary qualifications then it's not uh, particular that i should be an applicant to the post anyone can for challenges so these are two exceptions in locus standi one with regard to habeas corpus and the other with regard to the writ of quo warranto adayada ee anju writtukalil rendu writ habeas corpus habeas corpus na parayunnathu ore aale tadavil vechirikkunnathu anathikrutamayittaano anyayamayittaano ennu verify cheyan kodathi shramikkunna writ aanu habeas corpus ഒരാളെ തടവിൽ വെച്ചിരിക്കുകയാണ് അത് അന്യായമായിട്ടാണോ എന്ന് നോക്കുന്നു ഇവിടെ തടവിൽ കിടക്കുന്ന ആളല്ലാതെ തന്നെ അയാളുടെ ബന്ധുക്കൾക്കും മറ്റും ഒക്കെ കേസ് കൊടുക്കാൻ ഉള്ള അർഹത ഉണ്ട് ഇതാണ് ഒരു എക്സെപ്ഷൻ മറ്റൊരു എക്സെപ്ഷൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് കോ വോറണ്ടോ ആണ് കോ വോറണ്ടോ മീൻസ് ഒരു പബ്ലിക് സ്ഥാനത്തിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു വ്യക്തി വൈസ് ചാൻസലറോ മിനിസ്റ്ററോ മറ്റും അയാൾക്ക് അതിന് മിനിസ്റ്റർ അല്ല വൈസ് ചാൻസലറോ അങ്ങനെ ഒരു സബ്സ്റ്റാൻഷ്യൽ പോസ്റ്റ് ഒരു ഗവൺമെന്റ് ഉദ്യോഗസ്ഥൻ അയാൾക്ക് ആ പൊസിഷനിൽ ഇരിക്കാനുള്ള ക്വാളിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഇല്ല എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കൊടുക്കുന്ന ഹർജിയാണ് കോ വോറണ്ടു അവിടെയും ഈ ജോലിയിലേക്ക് അപ്ലൈ ചെയ്യാത്ത ഒരാൾക്ക് വേണമെങ്കിലും കേസ് കൊടുക്കുക 
So with regard to these two writs, there is an exception. With regard to all other writs, that is a habeas, uh, I mean mandibus, uh, co or um, mandibus or uh, certiorari and prohibition, the rule is that only the person aggrieved, only the person aggrieved could file a case. Now, this concept of locus standi and uh, writs and all, uh, it's not uh, uh, something which is seen in India alone. It can be uh, this particular principles are adopted and used in other countries like England and uh, the United States of America. Now, in America and England, the same rule was there. That is only the person agreed. Later, they came with a new concept that it is called the rate payer standi. What is rate payer standi? So the earlier rule was only the person aggrieved can file a case. But if you don't have any case, you don't have any case, you don't have any case, you don't have any case. England is a little bit more than developing. Developing is a rate payer jurisdiction. Rate payer jurisdiction means a person who is a taxpayer, a person who is paying tax in his country. As he is paying a tax in this country, he has a right to question the activities of the government because he is also part of it. He is a beneficiary and he is providing money to the government. So this is called the repair standing and this was adopted in India way back in 1974 uh, in cases like Varadarajan versus uh, municipality of um, municipality uh, I am not sure uh, that the state of uh, Tamil Nadu uh, municipality of Salem I think. So in this case uh, it was held that a taxpayer has a right to challenge the action of a municipality. In this particular case, the municipality decided to make a big statue using the municipality fund, fund of the municipality, which is uh, uh, the fund of the people. And the court held that a taxpayer has the right to challenge this. So the concept of locus and he was slowly broadened. That is, we do tax code. government in the samatei vai sahay ki no reala pole ana pa government ya anavishe vai chalevogal nartha ana gil ayal ka thele chori chia. Indul le reedi le locus and that happened in this case. Now the concept of locust anti was drastically developed or drastically changed. Uh, in the very famous case of S.P. Gupta of versus Union of India, which is popularly known as the judges transfer case. It's popularly known as the judges transfer case. Now in this case what happened was <coughs> there was a regulation or a provision of law which stated that the judges of the high court that is one high court can be transferred to another high court and similarly additional judges you know additional judges become uh, full-fledged judges only when they are uh, made permanent so the period of the additional judges can be extended can be extended now, in both these matters, the executive government has a definite rule. So, the thing is that with regard to transfer of judges and the appointment of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, extension of the service of the additional judges, the executive government is given a rule. Now, certain lawyers challenge this. Their claim is that when excessive power is given to the executive government with regard to appointment and transfer of judges, it will be a threat on the part of the, uh, there will be a threat on the part or there will be some sort of a duress 
from the part of the state towards the judges. And that will affect the independence of the judiciary. Now, we are not concerned about the decision in that case. But the preliminary point which came in this case is, here, with regard to transfer of judges and appointment of judges, the aggrieved person are the judges. And in such cases, how a lawyer can file a case in a matter with regard to grievance of a judge? Why lawyers are filing? What is their interest? They don't have any grievance. Here, the Supreme Court broadened the concept of locus standing in writs. The Supreme Court held that any person having sufficient interest, the term used is sufficient interest, they can file a case. And with regard to independence of judiciary, judges are persons with, I mean, sorry, the lawyers are persons with sufficient interest. So they can file a case. Rather, E High Court of the Judges in a transfer in the High Court additional judges in the Kala with the need to the name of the chair. Uru E Niamum Independence of Judiciary at a length and a mana in the Barna or to a kill in Marquis. Uruga very large general E appointment in a transfer in a state government in Victamayo Road. Other judges in the Independence in the Portola Karnagate or Nulan, Vakilamar, the argument. Case I get a vote. Nothing Prada Viga Chodi and Vadada. Judges in a transfer in the Vishetilla are the judges are an aggrieved person. Adana the Vakilamar in the Gari either one the brother. Supreme Court Locus Sandy on the Churda had to broaden Chile to Bar. No. Uri case in a that is any person having sufficient interest, they can file a case. And with regard to independence of judiciary, lawyers are persons with sufficient interest because it affects them also. So the concept of locus standi was broadened in the case of S.P. Gupta versus Union of India. That is the judge's transfer case. Now, in the third stage in the development of uh, uh, locus and A, comes the, the concept of the public interest litigation. The locus and the development of the Muravata face of the world is the Podu Talperia Harjia, Adhava, public interest litigation. Now, what is public interest litigation? Public interest litigation, it means that in the society, when there is a category of persons whose fundamental rights are being violated and this category of person as a result of ignorance, poverty, backwardness, or indigency is not aware of their rights, nor are they going to fight their case because they don't have the economic security to file the case. In such cases, any public spirited individual acting pro bono publico can file a case the for the protection of these downtrodden group of people and to protect their rights. This is the concept of public interest litigation. That is their category of persons who are unable to fight their case and their fundamental rights are being violated. Any public spirited individual or group can file a case on their Behalf. Samohatila, Mauriya 
അജ്ഞത കൊണ്ടോ സാമ്പത്തിക ശേഷി ഇല്ലാത്തത് കൊണ്ടോ അവർക്ക് സ്വന്തമായി കേസ് കൊടുക്കാൻ പറ്റാത്ത ഒരവസ്ഥ ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അവരോട് താല്പര്യമില്ല സമൂഹത്തിലെ ഏത് പൊതുജന താല്പര്യമുള്ള വ്യക്തിക്കോ സംഘടനയ്ക്കോ ഈ മനുഷ്യർക്കു വേണ്ടി കേസ് കൊടുക്കാവുന്നതാണ് ഇതാണ് പൊതു താല്പര്യ അർജി സോ വിത്ത് റിഗാർഡ് ടു പബ്ലിക് പബ്ലിക് ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റ് ഡെഡിക്കേഷൻ ഇവാൾഡ് ദി കൺസെപ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് വോട്ട് യു കോൾ ലോക്കൽ സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഐ റിറ്റ്സ് വാസ് റാഡിക്കലി ചേഞ്ച് വിത്ത് റിഗാർഡ് ടു എൻഫോഴ്സ്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് ഫണ്ടമെന്റൽ റൈറ്റ്സ് now there are three judges who played a pivotal role in this regard the three judges were one justice uh, uh, vr krishna here second it was a uh, justice deshai and thirdly it was justice pn bhagavati all iconic judges of the apex court now one of the earliest case with regard to public interest litigation is the popularly known case of asia case asia case and this case is uh, people's union for democratic rights versus uh, union of india <coughs> now in this case അപ്പൊ മൗര്യ ഈ പൊതു താല്പര്യ ആർജനയിലെ അടിസ്ഥാനപരമായ ഒരു കേസാണ് ഏഷ്യ കേസ് എന്ന് അറിയപ്പെടുന്ന പീപ്പിൾസ് യൂണിയൻ ഫോർ ഡെമോക്രാറ്റിക് റൈറ്റ്സ് വേഴ്സസ് യൂണിയൻ ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യ നൗ ഇൻ ദിസ് കേസ് ദ ഫാക്ടേഴ്സ് ലൈക്ക് ദിസ് യു നോ ഫോർ കൺസ്ട്രക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ഏഷ്യ വില്ലേജ് വെയർ ഏഷ്യ ഹാപ്പൻ ഫോർ ദ കൺസ്ട്രക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ ഏഷ്യ വില്ലേജ് ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ടു ബി കൺസ്ട്രക്റ്റഡ് വിത്ത് ഇൻ എ ഷോർട്ട് സ്പാൻ ഓഫ് ടൈം huge number of workers they were brought by the contractors from up bihar and all these states from the rural areas they were made to work like animals they were not provided any basic amenities by the contractors and they were not even paid the minimum wages so they were asked to work like slaves so these poor people whose fundamental rights are being violated did not know about this they were ignorant they came from the rural areas and they had no means to file a case now here people's union for democratic rights a non governmental organization a public spirited group they filed a case on behalf of these people and the preliminary question of local stand i came why can't these people file the case they are they agree why you are coming for that here the supreme court evolved the concept of public interest litigation the court held that there, there is a category of persons who are unable to fight for their rights they are poor people so they have the local stand i that the people's union for democratic rights have the local stand i to file a case ഇപ്പൊ ഏഷ്യാൻ വില്ലേജില് തൊഴിലാളികളായിട്ട് പെട്ടെന്ന് ജോലി ചെയ്ത് തീർക്കാൻ വേണ്ടി യു പി ബിഹാറിൽ നിന്ന് ആയിരക്കണക്കിന് തൊഴിലാളികളെ കൊണ്ടുവരികയും അവർക്ക് ബേസിക് വേതനം കൊടുക്കാതിരിക്കുക അവർക്ക് പ്രാഥമിക കാര്യങ്ങൾക്കുള്ള ഫെസിലിറ്റി കൊടുക്കാതിരിക്കുക അങ്ങനെ അവരെ ഒരു അടിമകളെ പോലെ പണിയിപ്പിക്കുകയായിരുന്നു ഏഷ്യാൻ വില്ലേജ് കെട്ടാശ് ഇത് കണ്ട് സഹി കേട്ട ഒരു പീപ്പിൾസ് യൂണിയൻ ഫോർ ഡെമോക്രാറ്റിക് റൈറ്റ്സ് ആണ് കേസ് കൊടുത്തത് കോടതിയിൽ ഒരു ചോദ്യം വന്നു ഇവർക്ക് ഇതിനകത്ത് എന്താ റൈറ്റ് എന്ത് അങ്ങനെയാണ് കോടതി ഈ പൊതു താല്പര്യ ഹർജി ഇതൊരു പൊതു താല്പര്യ ഹർജിയാണ് പൊതുവായ ഒരു താല്പര്യമുള്ള ഹർജിയാണ് അവർക്ക് കേസ് കൊടുക്കാം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു നമുക്ക് സെക്കൻഡ് കേസ് ഇൻ വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് കേസ് വിത്ത് റിഗാർഡ് ടു പബ്ലിക് ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റ് ലിറ്റിഗേഷൻ ഇസ് ദ കേസ് ഓഫ് ബെന്തു മുക്തി മോർച്ച ബെന്തു മുക്തി മോർച്ച വേഴ്സസ് യൂണിയൻ ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യ നോ ഹിയർ വാട്ട് ആപ്പൻ വേഴ്സ് നവ് Uh, in uh, haryana uh, i mean uh, <coughs> some part of haryana like uh, faridabad district of haryana there were uh, bonded laborers bonded laborers means the landlord will give some loan to the laborer and he has to pay back the debt and even he if he work for 
the whole of his life he will not be able to pay back the debt. Now such sort of a bonded laborers existed in Faridabad district and a public spirited organization produce, I mean, put this before the Supreme Court by a letter. Oh, so this was uh, taken as a repetition by the Supreme Court and uh, issued process. That is the Supreme Court issued orders, sorry, issued orders. Now here also, uh, uh, the thing is that this public spirited individual or group was allowed to represent the poor bonded laborers. So this is another case. Then there is a case of DC Vadwa. Another case, uh, it's an interesting case. In DC Vadwa uh, uh, case, what happened was in uh, certain states, there was re-promulgation of ordinances. The usual rule was with regard to an ordinance is that ordinance have to be May when the assembly is not in session and as soon as the assembly uh, uh, is convened, it has to be produced or put before the assembly and converted into a legislation. This is the ordinary rule. But in certain states, what happens is that they are, instead of uh, putting it before the assembly, uh, uh, the ordinance will continue for six months, then it will lapse. Then after the assembly is over, they will again re-promulgate it. So, uh, uh, academician who researched on this found this to be a fraud on the constitution and it was challenged. And the court held that this academician has the local standard to file this case. Now, in the first case, the first case is that the Dindu Mukti Morchayana 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 case is that Naraki uh in the Bara in the Naragatulya Maya Avasta with a letter very Supreme Order in a Mumbila Ethabadi, Adur retired at a key to the Mukti Murchi. But the DC Vadwa case in the ordinance of the Bara the Arbasa Kendal Apsa on the Sahan order, a legila sapta in the Nevo at Basaka. Chella Samsara the Jedo Shinjala e ordinance Arbasa Kendal Apso. We will do it and I change him into the property. A Pangre, Nevo Akada than the Nevo at a country. Now, with the advent of the concept of public interest litigation, new, new, new jurisdictions were taken by the Supreme Court. That the Supreme Court uh, started uh, allowing uh, writs on different grounds. Uh, for example, uh, Class actions were allowed. Class actions means in order to represent a class of people, one particular member of the class can file a case or a group can file a case. Class actions are the For example, APSK sunk Agil Bharati. Uh, and uh, ABSK sunk versus Union of India. Uh, in that case, an unregistered uh, railway association was allowed to represent the grievance of the uh, workers of the railway. Now, the Supreme Court uh, again has held in cases like uh, what do you call cases like. Uh, um, Vardichant, uh, that is uh, Retlam Municipality versus Vardichant. Uh, the Supreme Court held that uh, any member of the public has uh, a right to file a case against the municipality to enforce their duties. That there also the Lokastandai concept is taken to a new height. Now, 
public interest litigation for the students, you can easily remember certain cases. For example, uh, in same name, in same name, you have different cases. For example, with regard to the fundamental right, uh, rights violation of the uh, inmates of judges, uh, inmates of the jail. A person called Sunil Batra had filed a series of cases. He himself was an inmate of the Tihar jail and with regard to violation and atrocities in the Tihar jail, he has filed so many uh, uh, repetitions. Sunil Batra was the Delhi administration one, Sunil Batra was the Delhi administration two, all these things. Public interest litigation. But Sunil Badra and the Varana Tihar Jail Lilla Uri Andevasi, Avadilla Tadavagar Kurla, Manisha Manisha Abagasalanga and La Kurchu reward public interest litigations. On behalf of all the persons who are agreed. This is Sunil Badra was the Delhi administration one, two, etc. One was with regard to use of third degree methods in the G. One was with regard to putting uh, the inmates of jail on fetters. And they was able to do it and they was able to do it and they was able to do it and they was able to do it. Third degree methods of giving it and they was able to do it. And these are some classic cases of public interest litigation. S similarly, with regard to environmental protection, uh, an activist by the name M.C. Mehta, he has filed a lot of cases with regard to Ganga pollution, uh, factories uh, polluting the uh, Ganges River. Then again, Hussein Ara Cartoon 1, Hussein Ara Cartoon 2, another series of cases with regard to fundamental right violation. So, nowadays you can see umpteen number of uh, public interest litigation. There was a flooding of uh, fundamental, I mean, public interest litigation cases, both in Supreme Court and the High Court. Now, when there was an excessive use of fundamental, right, I mean, public interest litigation, now the courts are cautious about allowing this public interest litigations. Because nowadays the people are using this uh, opportunity or this public interest litigations for publicity and even for political or under political motivations. So PIL or public interest litigation has now become in certain cases politically interest litigation or in some cases, publicity interest litigation. Now the Supreme Court has given certain guidelines how the High Courts have to take in this public interest litigations because of this flooding of cases. Now, uh, in certain cases, as you might have read in the papers, Juhi Chabla and many other persons have been fined by the Supreme Court when they have come with uh, non-issue cases just for publicity, according to the Supreme Court. <clears throat> now, way back in the early period, jurists like D. Smith, he is a very famous writer in administrative law and constitutional law, he has put a word of caution that meddlesome interlopers should not be allowed to take the recourse of the court or they should not be allowed to come with frivolous cases. The word used was meddlesome interlopers. So meddlesome interlopers and cantankerous litigants should be set at bay. In India, way back in the 19 early period, in a case called Maganbai versus Union of India, the Supreme Court had reiterated that Meddlesome interlopers should not be allowed. So, we know that public interest litigation has its own benefits. But 
it should be taken with a pinch of salt in the new contest because of this middlesome interlopules and cantagorous litigate. Adaitha, if you public Pudutadvari Harjini, if you have a question about the public, this publicity is not a problem. It 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 is but in the case of the middlesome interlopers and cantankerous litigants, they are not able to do this. This is a good thing. But this is a good thing. And this is a good thing. So, this is a, uh, what do you call uh, in a nutshell the evolution of public interest litigation. And the evolution in the doctrine of locus standi in writs in India. Hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. Thank you.